Now, an operation that was approved by the FDA in 2001 is called adjustable gastric banding. Uh, it's often referred to as lap band, but that's a particular brand of a band. Esophagus, stomach, this muscle is called the pylorus, controls the rate of emptying of the stomach. The band is like a belt that goes around and behind the upper part of the stomach and buckles. And on the inside of that belt is a balloon, like somebody glued a little inner tube to the inside of that belt. And that goes to a tube, and the tube goes to a port. And the port's like a port used for chemotherapy or long-term antibiotics under the skin. So you don't have to stick the vein each time, you just stick this little chamber under the skin. But instead of being up here, we put it in your abdominal wall. You know those muscles like the weightlifters have, the six-pack that runs up the center of the abdomen, there's a real strong tendon on top of that muscle, and we sew it to that tendon. And that's deep to the skin and fat, and we always keep a little bit of fat up here, and it's hard to see it. It's even hard to find it sometimes. Um, if I have you lay down on an exam table and kind of raise your head and shoulders off the mat, that tightens the muscle, and then I can feel it. And then I can stick it with a needle in a syringe and add water. And as I add water to the port, the balloon on the inside of the band starts to fill. Okay. So this is a model of one. Stomach sits right about here in your body. Esophagus going up to your throat. Just a little bit of stomach above the band. Uh, this is the body of the stomach. This is where that muscle, the pylorus is. Um, the band is a soft plastic called silastic. It's what all the medical devices are made out of. Uh, this is the tubing, and this is the port. The port's a hard plastic, hard enough to stop a needle. The center is soft like a big rubber eraser, and that's what we're aiming for. Now, if we replace the port with a syringe, you can see that as I add here, the balloon fills. And as the balloon gets bigger, the opening through the middle gets smaller, right? So that's how that works. It's a well-engineered piece of plastic. It ought to be for what you're paying for it. Um, it's designed to last longer than you will, so it's engineered to be put in and left in for the rest of your life. Uh, it's real operation. I have to bring you in the hospital, general anesthetic, put you to sleep, put in the tubes to pass our laparoscopic instruments through pass this behind the stomach, and that's really tiger country back there, the aorta's back there, the vena cava's back there. Buckle the band, attach the port to the tendon there, close the skin, takes about 30 minutes. You go to the recovery room, I'll come out and find your family, make sure everything's okay. Um, about three or four hours after surgery, we go down to x-ray land, have you drink some stuff, we're watching it go through, we're looking to make sure that the band is sitting correctly, kind of pointing at your left shoulder, and then what you drink goes through. Start you on sips of water, popsicles, jello. Most people go home that afternoon. So if we do it in the morning, you go home in the afternoon. If we do it in the afternoon, you go home in the evening. If you live six hours away, we might keep you overnight. Um, bring you back at two weeks to the hospital, check the little wounds, make sure everything's okay. Uh, meet with our nutritional therapist. Six weeks, come back, uh, and we'll do our first fill. And the fills are done over in the group practice where you came in. Have you lay down, raise your head up, there, there it is, right there, done. And the most common thing people say after the first fill is, you're kidding, that's it. I mean, they were all psyched up for something big and bad, and, and we just don't have the same nerves here like we do on our fingertips. Um, but we bring you back every three to four weeks, adding to the band until we get it just right. And just right, it really doesn't matter how much volume is in there. It matters how you feel about food. When the band is just right, your appetite is suppressed, a small meal makes you satisfied, you're losing one to two pounds a week. Okay, that's when the band is just right. Okay, um, if you're, you're starving, your appetite is huge, you feel like you're on a diet, you're thinking about food all the time, I need to keep adding. If you can eat as much as I can eat, I need to keep adding. And it takes six or seven visits to get it there. Some people three, some people 10, but if we look at 1,000 patients, 6.5 is the average. Um, and then all of a sudden the smiles come out. <laughs> then all of a sudden it starts to make sense when it starts. And, it, 
And the thing you have to understand about the band is until we get that right pressure volume combination for you, it's not, it do, it's useless. It doesn't do anything. And that means everything's okay. It's not like it helps you a little bit, then a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more maximum help. It's kind of useless, useless, useless. Here we go. Okay, and the hard part for me and the band patients is to help them keep the faith while we're getting there. Okay, they're generally impatient people. Um, but uh, once we get the band adjusted and, you know, your appetite is suppressed, your meals are smaller, your weight's coming down, then I start to spread out the visits. And I'll see you in three months, and then I'll see you in six months. And usually once or twice a year, we got to do something with the band. Again, depending on how you're thinking about food. You know, you're noticing my appetite's back. I'm hungry all the time. Let's put a little bit more in. Um, my meals are starting to get, get bigger. I stopped losing weight. I haven't reached my weight loss goals. Let's put a little bit more in. Um, we're five years down the road now. Uh, I used to build homes for a living. Now I'm sitting behind a desk all day. I'm starting to pick up some weight. Let's put a little bit more in that band. You don't need as many calories anymore. Um, used to sit behind a desk all day. Now I have a mail route and I walk about eight miles a day. Maybe we ought to take a little out of that band, let you get some more calories. Um, I've decided to become a world-class marathoner and now I run 80 miles a week. This hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but if it did, you know, I'd probably empty the band, you know, because you could eat as many calories as you needed. Um, but that's how the band works. You know, when it's adjusted correctly, it tends to suppress your appetite, make your meals smaller. But you got to do the fills, you got to do the maintenance, okay? And the thing about the band, it's a real straightforward operation, but you got to do the maintenance and you got to do the care of the band and the, you know, it's like any device, you have to take care of it.